Welcome to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. What's it like to live through the entire modern UFO era? Are there really men in black? Who was Timothy Green Beckley? Hello and welcome to the 906th edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Uh, coming to you from WON AM and FM Radio in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, on the Paranormal Radio app, from TalkStream Live on YouTube and via uh, TuneIn.com. I'm Ben, and those Tim-type questions came from my co-host, partner in Paranormal Adventures, and dad, Paul. Today we honor the memory of one of the most prominent and most unusual Americans in the field of UFO studies. And to help us do that, we welcome a frequent guest, now making his debut as a guest co-host, the one and only Tim R. Swartz, who joins us via Skype today. Tim is an Emmy Award-winning television producer, videographer, and is the author of a number of popular books, including the one we featured when he was uh, last on the show, Jeff the Talking Mongoose, the eighth wonder of the world. That was a barn burner. Uh, if you'd like to hear that, that's show number 782 from March 3rd, 2019. It's in the archives at BehindTheParanormal.com, and it's around on the iTunes and other things. Tim has investigated unexplained phenomena all over the world and has appeared widely in the media. Tim was a close associate of Tim Beckley, co-authored a number of books with him, and co-hosted the Exploring the Bizarre radio show with him for many years. So, Tim Schwartz, welcome back to Behind the Paranormal. Why, thank you, gentlemen. It's uh, always a great pleasure to uh, be with you on Behind the Paranormal. Yeah, I know. It feels like it's been a while, too. It's, uh, you know, I, I mean, you know, Jeff the Talking Mongoose sticks out like a sore thumb. And <laughs> that was great. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was it was a fun show. It was something we, yeah. we, we, you know, it's on a topic that we never really touch, which is Talking Mongoose. Talking Mongoose. Yeah, mongoose. Yeah, mongoose. Yes. Mongoose. Yes. So, um, and uh, as I say, this is your debut as a uh, guest co-host here, and and we usually rotate uh, the guest co-host, so we're going to have a great time uh, today, and uh, you'll be on the show more frequently, uh, I'm sure. Indeed, and I guess we'll we'll hop into it. So today we're going to kick back, we're going to remember our uh, mutual friend, uh, Timothy Green Beckley, uh, and his somewhat zany life uh, from from those not, or for those not familiar with uh, Tim Beckley, let's introduce him by way of a uh, 10-minute clip from our uh, October 6th show uh, from 2014, when Tim came all the way from New York to Rhode Island to be in studio with us, which I think is actually the longest anybody's come to be to, uh, yes. be, to be in, I, in I studio so, yeah. with us. Um, and this marked our, uh, the 50th anniversary of his first appearance on WON Radio in 1964, uh, with another but lesser known UFO great of the 60s, who is very familiar with our local audience, uh, Joseph L. Ferrier. Uh, Joe hosted the afternoon talk show here on uh, WON Open Lines for 50 years um, and is remembered very fondly in our local listening area, and many people will appreciate Tim's comments about him. Okay, so let's play that clip. It's a little long, but it, it'll uh, show you who Tim was. <laughs> I'm playing the wrong clip, I think. It's okay. It happens to the best of us, Dad. <laughs> All right. So let's... Okay. There we are. Maybe not. Oh, well... That's the right one. I am Ben, and those strange questions came from my co-host and partner in the paranormal, my dad. And this evening, we are very pleased to have right here in our little studio one of the uh, first and greatest UFO researchers of, um, well, of all time, and an aficionado of all things paranormal as well. And uh, we welcome your calls this evening. It's 401-766-1240 locally, or from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, 800-449-1240. Timothy Green Beckley is a pioneer in paranormal research. He is an author, publisher, and producer. Mr. UFO, as he is known, is probably the longest standing and most famous of all UFO investigators. He says that the paranormal has been part of his life since childhood. He reports having his first out-of-body experience at the age of six, and saw his first three UFOs at the age of ten. 
Now, Tim always loved uh, going, to, going to the studio rather than phoning in the interviews. Carbons, 
to other people so you could share in the correspondence. That was mm -hmm. the uh, kind of like a, you know, a, an internet group would be uh, today or even right. a, a, an email. And then it got to the point where we uh, were sending cassette, uh, not cassette tapes, they were real to real tapes, small ones, mm -hmm. you know, little portable reel to reel, we'd send that around. And, and so I, I guess I talked to Joe a few times on the, uh, the telephone and we exchanged the uh, uh, magazines. And uh, then I guess he invited me up to do the show uh, that he was uh, the host on. And uh, so this is actually, uh, uh, I don't know, I almost 50 years, I don't remember exact date, but if anybody there out in the listener land has an old copy of the Midnight Newspaper, which was the Globe that uh, turned into the Globe that's at the, uh, sold in the supermarket. There was not the Boston Globe. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. This is the yellow the tablet, tablet, the tablet yeah, yes. Yes, yes. and in those days it was a lot you know a lot uh, stranger than it is now anyway i remember the headline story was uh, I, I investigated the uh, sightings made by astronauts uh, ufo uh, sightings oh yeah a yeah. long long time ago and for some reason i guess the paper asked me to send it a you know a photograph to use with the article and i had one i guess that joe had sent me a sighting here at the microphone not the same uh, location for the studio but the, he and I were in the, in the studio, and he was interviewing me. Well, I don't know how young I was. I wish I could find a photograph. Uh, I had uh, crew cut, horn, black horn rim glasses, and the acne still showed on my face. So I, I must have been, I don't know, 18 years old in the photograph. So that had to be pushing 50, 50 years ago, between 47 and 50 years ago. And then Joe and I uh, stayed in touch, but... Not all that, uh, you know, much. He had his career. He did publish a, a magazine later on. He took some incredible UFO photographs. Now, if you go to the Internet and you type in Joseph, I believe it was the middle name, uh, initial was Al yeah. Ferrier, you'll get some really wild uh, the, the photographs. I mean, I think that these things are real. And I saw photographs that he showed me, and I have somewhere in my... Uh, Huge, huge files, if I ever find anything. Photographs, that, I mean, there was one that showed a cigar-shaped mothership in the sky surrounded by five of these kind of bell-shaped um, uh, craft, scout craft. Yeah, it was taken, I believe, in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Just well, this right. one looked like he was taken outside his window. Mm. Uh, and there was, I don't know, there are some people who seem to have the knack of attracting UFOs and being able to photograph them. That is a strange thing. Okay, there's a, uh, another fellow who's deceased now as well, by the name of Paul Villa, uh, who was from New Mexico. And he had these things, they landed in the, you know, they, they were landing outside his uh, trailer where he lived. Now, he had a lot of stuff, in the, and this is also on the internet. Uh, in fact, we published a book of his, his photographs. Uh, and, and, you know, you can say, well, maybe he tossed something in the sky and, and, and photographed it. But, you know, the weirdest thing is, is he's got this dome-shaped sh uh, craft there. It looks like he's got portholes around it. And in the sky are these three or four metallic balls. I mean, is he a juggling? <laughs> well, th that'll give you an idea of who Tim, uh, Tim was. And uh, that, was a, that was a lot of fun, that show. Uh, and we're very happy to have with us uh, Tim's niece, Dory, who was called into the show, and uh, Tim uh, Tim Swartz, you know, everybody, let's all just sort of have a conversation. So, um, uh, Dory, welcome to Behind the Paranormal on WOON. Hi, how are you? Oh, well, we're, we're, we're better than nothing, for sure. So, um, now, do you know Tim Swartz? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, well, Tim's with us also, I, I hope. Tim, yes, are you with us? Here. Yes, still here. Very good. He's just, a, he's a true professional. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, uh, Dory, um, w can you tell us what it was like growing up as the niece of, of Timothy Green Beckley? Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> Must have been fun. Yeah, oh, lots of fun. Lots of fun. I also uh, have my daughter here with me, too. Oh, great. Okay. So, yes. grandniece. Yes, his grandniece. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, welcome to the show. I, I don't know your name. Oh, oh, Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, very good. Okay, so <clears throat> did you see Tim often, and, and were you involved in his work at all? Um, not too much. Well, yeah, saw him very often, both of us. Um, but his work, no, only like what he did, you know, I knew what he would be working on, but I didn't know much about his, you know, I don't know, about what he was doing, only somebody told him. 
Yeah. What was he like as a person? I mean, it was a lot of fun. He was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. That's how that's how I knew him. Yeah. So okay, well, well, let's switch over to Tim. Uh, Tim, how did you first get to know Tim Beckley? Well, oddly enough, one of the first UFO related books that I ever bought, uh, I bought from uh, Gray Barker Saucerian Press. And it just so happened to have been a book by uh, Tim Beckley. I think it was the first one he ever wrote, uh, probably when he was around uh, 15 or 16, something like that. It was like Subterranean Worlds uh, <laughs> Inside the Earth, the uh, uh, Shaver Mystery. And uh, though at the time I didn't realize it was from Tim Beckley, it wasn't until years later that I pulled it out and I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, so, I mean, we had had that, uh, we had that connection, I'm mean, almost right from the very beginning. But I was first introduced to uh, Tim Beckley around 1983 or 84 when I was working at a television station in Dayton, Ohio. And at the time, uh, J. Allen Hynek had uh, come to town to uh, give a talk at the uh, Air Force uh, Museum there at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So I, I was able to get uh, an, an interview with Hynek, and uh, it was a great interview, by the way. I mean, this was uh, one of the first where he actually came out and said that uh, he was no longer sure that UFOs uh, could be uh, extraterrestrial craft, and he was talking about, uh, you know, interdimensional and paranormal aspects. Uh, you know, it was, it was just a fantastic interview. So I was able to get this uh, up on the uh, CBS uh, news feed, which was a satellite service uh, that was provided to all the CBS uh, stations that they could pull these stories down from all over the world and uh, use them on their own newscast. So Tim must have seen this interview on uh, the uh, local CBS station there in New York because he tracked me down and uh, wanted a VH VHS copy and a transcript, which uh, you know I was more than happy to provide. And, uh, and, and that's how it started. Uh, but, uh, I actually didn't really, uh, start working for him until he put out, uh, UFO Universe magazine, uh, which was a few years later. And he, he got a hold of me and wanted me to, uh, submit some articles and do some research for him and also help punch up, uh, some of the other articles that, uh, some other people, uh, had, uh, provided. So, I mean, uh, it just, uh, it just went from there. I mean, it's, I don't think a day went by, uh, after I started, uh, doing stuff for him for UFO Universe and his other magazines that, uh, I didn't hear for him, from him one way or the other. And of course, this was pre-internet. So, I mean, he'd call me on the phone or I'd get letters and, uh, you know, but that's the kind of guy that, uh, that, that Tim was. I mean, once you were in his fold, so to speak, um, you know, he just, uh, uh, kept up the communication. Yeah. And we found the same thing too. Well, let's go on and, and, uh, all three of you can, can sort of get in, uh, on this if you, uh, want to help contribute to the answer. Uh, we have a, uh, a a listener in Bogota, Colombia, who has he's actually co-hosted the show once, and we're probably going to bring him in more. Uh, very very good questioner sends in excellent questions uh, to every show, and he has sent in some uh, for this show. So Ben, mm, yes. So our listener Peter from Bogota, Colombia, writes to us uh, a couple of questions. So we'll start right at the beginning. Um, I guess we'll we'll start with you, Tim. Uh, can you tell us or uh, about any UFO or paranormal experiences that Tim Beckley had? Oh, sure. Well, you know, Tim often talked about how the house that he was growing up uh, in. I, I think there it was in uh, New, New Brunswick. Uh, that New Brunswick, it was New haunted. Jersey. Yeah, not yeah. Canada. Okay. No. No, no. <laughs> uh, you know, he he said that he was haunted. That it had uh, that uh, you know, there's various kinds of, of, of paranormal activity there. He said that uh, he recalled uh, uh, one time he was sitting at the uh, dinner table, and he did. He, he said he wasn't very old, but you know, he, he distinctly remembers this. He said that uh, a big dish slid across the table and then kind of floated to the floor, but it didn't break. And, you know, it was a you know, big china dish, I guess, the way that uh, Tim put it. Uh, but I guess there was also uh, the phenomena of a, a, a baby crying around the house. Uh, uh, he said that he remembers one night in the middle of the winter hearing the sound of this, uh, of this crying that uh, his mother went to the back door and opened it up. And in the snow leading up to the... Uh, 
steps to the driveway, there appeared to uh, look like little baby booty prints. And they, uh, they went and followed them out into the backyard, but they just, uh, they just disappeared in the snow. Oh, I remember uh, him telling me that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, he also said that uh, his godmother uh, one time was uh, was babysitting him, and uh, uh, she heard this baby crying. Uh, he said that this uh, this godmother was a very staunch Catholic and not prone to believing in this stuff. Uh, but uh, I guess that she opened a door in the house, and uh, there was a woman with a baby in her arms, uh, rocking the baby back and forth, and the baby was crying. So, you know, he said that her godmother, his godmother knew that there, was, there shouldn't be any person in that kind of house, so she just kind of, like, closed the door and uh, 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 gathered her wits and then opened it again, but there was nobody there. Okay. Yeah. Tim, do you have any uh, questions or comments for Dory and Michelle? Oh, well, I think uh, now this, this kind of goes off a little bit of uh, t- uh, Tim's UFO topic, but just really quick, you know, Tim was a, uh, a, a filmmaker who, uh, who, who made some direct VHS uh, movies, and uh, Dory and Michelle talked about uh, one time about uh, how they were shooting some scenes at his sister's house out there in New Jersey, Yeah. Of course, now being a, a trusted radio station, you, you know you can't really uh, uh, get too too raunchy with this. But what were some of the things that uh, that you ha- uh, remember happening out there? <laughs> My mom wanted to have a thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, she was filming um, the jungle vampire, evil right. vampire, I believe right. it was, mm-hmm. and um, the prop were. Uh, all that, um, <laughs> all that um, kosher towards my mom, but you know the girls were dressed up like um, jungle people. You know, like they had the little skimpy uh, skirts. And what really got my mom to was point the house by a main road. They were topless. So when my mom agreed for him to come and do this in the yard because she had woods and everything in the backyard, uh, she didn't expect that. So that that, that was that was funny. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be very, very interesting too. Uh, Dory and Michelle, do you to get back to Peter's question? Do you uh, remember Tim sharing with you any personal uh, paranormal or UFO experiences? Uh, you know, within the family. Um. Well. UFO, um, I'm trying to... Well, and it, for me, uh, the, the house that Tim grew up in, um, I wasn't in that house very often. We had a... Um, well, you were... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the yeah, house... Yeah, kind of breaking up here, yeah. Uh, paranormal things going on for, for years. Yeah. Um, okay. My... Yeah, so growing up, I have always heard stories about, you know, all of the stuff that was going on. But when Tim grew up there, it was, it was one house. And when I, you know, was younger, we had divided the house into two sections. So there was, like, a downstairs apartment, upstairs apartment. And the upstairs apartment in New Jersey is that university is there. So we rented out the, the college students. And then my other people live downstairs today. And so a few times that I can remember being old enough to remember being there, um, I heard stuff happening in the basement. And I don't know if it, you know, because I had grew, grew up hearing all the stories about this house, but I can remember hearing a baby crying. Um, but I'm not so sure that I had ever heard Tim's story about a baby. I remember when Brian got back to the house to check on me, he was like, you know, how it now you know, how how are you? What was going on? It's like, you know, everything was fine except the baby upstairs kept crying. And he was like, There's no baby up there. Um there was also a drunk that and I can remember sneaking down there, I don't think I've been there. And, you know, who knows? I think I just kind of spooked my stuff out and he kind of yeah. for okay. anything at the time. Uh, but, I mean, there's literally 
countless stories in my family mm-hmm. about our normal activity happening at the house. Okay. Um, and then the house that my grandmother had, which was there, which is where they shot the, you know, the jungle eating lesbian vampire movie. <coughs> yeah. Uh, paranormal activity happening at that. Place, remember, uh, and I don't know. Uh, you know, it's for me. I, you know, it's thirty when it, I can understand that this upbringing. But you, mm. uh, you mentioned earlier, if we were his work, and he. We, we were, in a sense, like, we, I don't think that any of us know, you know, 10% of what is about UFOs, about Middle Earth, about, you know, all of, all that he was into, but we were all very heavily involved in business. Excellent. Uh, in, of, of, like, getting uh, orders shipped out to people, dealing with shipping, bookkeeping, and inventory, and I remember growing up with his books, you know, reading his books and doing spells, thinking that, you know, I was a, a witch in the back. <laughs> yeah. Chris. Okay, excellent. Well, we're, uh, we're coming up on, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> our mid-show break. And <clears throat> Dory and, and Michelle, thank you so much for calling in. And we'll be in touch off the air. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you're listening to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno on WON 1240 AM and 99.5 FM in New England's beautiful Blackstone River Valley. And we'll be right back to talk more about Tim Beckley and with our special guest co-host today, Tim Swartz. So stick with us. The night is alive. Join us and take a walk on the weird side when you tune in to the Kingdom of Nye, hosted by Heather Wade, the finest in late night talk. Listen live free weeknights starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time at thekingdomofnye.com, talkstreamlive.com, and the Paranormal Radio app. Want to take a ride? We're local and live at 99.5 FM, ONAM and FM. And welcome back. It's Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno and special guest co-host Tim Swartz today. And <clears throat> it's w, as I say, it's 1240 AM, 99.5 FM. And uh, let's turn to kind of, I guess, another aspect of, of Tim Beckley, who we're, we're remembering today. Uh, Tim was uh, by, by uh, no stress. He was certainly a character. All right. Um, and uh, I remember that uh, when he first invited uh, ben and I to contribute to some, some of his books, and and Tim, uh, you and, and I and and Ben uh, have um, uh, joint uh, bylines in uh, not joint bylines, but uh, you know we're we're on the spines of a couple of his books, and I remember and and they often tended to be not always, but they tended to be kind of sensationalistic covers, you know, mm-hmm. like from the 1950s, and uh, I remember people calling me, say, "Is this you? Is this a different Paul? You know, you know why are you in a book like this?" I said, "Well." Tim, you, I mean, it, it yeah, it look, they look, it, they look kind of fun to me. I, I thought it was, it was a kind of a fun, uh, format for some of these books. And, um, they, they would be, uh, well, Ben and I kind of refer to them as Beckleyisms. Uh, <laughs> they, they would be, you know, he'd, he'd put Ben's name on, on my article or, or vice, or, you know, or whatever. You know, little, little things that really didn't mean any, uh, didn't make any problems. But there was one time, that I did get a little miffed with it, or kind of a lot miffed with him, because uh, what, what he put under my name was not what I'd written. <clears throat> you know, I think it was kind of. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, there, there were there was an occasional photograph uh, of that had nothing to do with 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 uh, that he got off the internet or somebody. I don't even know who did the final edits on these books. But yeah, you know, but we we, I can, we kind of had a love hate relationships w- with his books, uh, you know, in that sense. So Tim, what say you uh, on that? Were you involved in the production of that? Can we blame you? <laughs> yes, you can. You can blame me because uh, for a lot of his books, I, I was the person who who did the uh, uh, the formatting, put the book together, uh-huh. uh, you know, uh, things like that. Though I I will go and defer that. Uh, Everything that went into these books ultimately uh, came from Tim. 
Yeah. So, I mean, he would say, uh, and Sean Castile was also a very big part. Uh, uh, not only did Sean write articles, but Sean was the uh, uh, proofreader of, of all of these books. And, and Sean was a great proofreader, very fastidious. And uh, I know that uh, several times I've had to go back uh, a, a, a number of times fixing just little tiny uh, uh, errors, punctuation marks, and things like that. But, you know, that's you know, when you put these types of books out. There are lots of people out there who just love to send you an email saying that, oh, I found all kinds of errors, and then we'll send oh, you a big happens. list of, yeah, you know, like that. there should be a period where instead there's a, you know, blah, 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 blah like that. Okay. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Tim was the person who would actually – uh, 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 get all of the chapters together. Uh, he would pick out uh, uh, photographs that he wanted, you know, captions and things like that. And, you know, like you said, uh, you know, there were times where he would send me stuff and, and I'd be like, I can't use this. You know, I, first of <laughs> all, it has, it has nothing to do with the article. Or, uh, you know, or, you know, sometimes he would send me, you know, photographs that the resolution was, was obviously, you know, he would, he, he would find it on the internet someplace and just copy and paste it and then send it to me. And I'd be like, Oh my God, you know, the rev- resolution on this is like, you know, 72 dots per inch. I can't use this. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. I, I also, I also do all the Photoshop, uh, uh for the, uh, the books as well. So, but, um, you know, I, I think that with myself and Sean Castile, for the most part, we kind of help keep uh, uh, Tim kind of not toned down, but I mean, you know, help <laughs> help t- him tone the tone rather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, kind of kind of help the, you know, him make you know as as professional as uh, uh, as we could when we put out these books because they were they were labors of love. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, we spent lots of time on each one of these books, uh, uh, trying to make sure that, um, you know, the, the stories were vetted properly, that, uh, the, the, the photographs, you know, actually, you know, would go along uh, with the articles and things like that. And, and you talked about, like, the covers, you know, Tim loved those kinds of covers. Oh, I think yeah. it was big. You know, I think it was because he loved the, uh, like the, uh, the pulp science fiction magazines mm. from the, yeah, I was uh, going to say the, the science fiction magazines from the thirties. Yeah. I, I was going to, I was yes. going to ask about that too. Yeah. Cause I, I, I love the covers were just, they were fun and they were like, they were nostalgic and they, and it, it was, I, I was, I was actually you beat me to it. Cause I was going to ask, you know, what, why, why the pulpy kind of like exploitation type covers. And there we go. Well, I have one in my hand here that is, uh, <clears throat> Very well done. I thought it's not not uh, that way at all. And if for anybody who's uh, watching the video feed here, and apologies to those who are not, um, this is the um, UFO repeaters, and it has for our local audience. Uh, UFO repeaters is the, the, the book, and it's got uh, our dear friend Joe Ferrier from WOON here, uh, big full page picture of him as a young man holding his uh, the, the negatives of the. Um, UFO photos that Tim referred to when we played the recording, mm. and uh, it's it's also got the whole story of his trip up here to be on our show, and uh, it, it's 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 well it, it's just, it's a lot of fun. So anybody uh, in our local listing area here in uh, southeastern New England, you might want to especially pick up this book, UFO Repeaters: Seeing Is Believing. All right, and uh, now these books are available on Amazon, uh, of course. And uh, Tim, what's uh, what's the future of the publishing operation? Well, um, right now, uh, 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 Dory and, uh, and and her daughter, daughter Michelle are really. I mean, they're they're the ones who are trying to go through everything uh, through Tim's files, through his. Uh, uh, records, uh, you know, his Amazon account and things like that. I mean, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they would like to, um, to keep the business going, but of course, uh, you know, they, they, they have to deal with all the legalese, you know, uh, mm. the IRS and, mm. and, and, and things like that. So all of the books, though, are still available on Amazon. 
Um, there's uh, uh, since since Amazon with their books uh, uh, ha- has gone to mostly uh, print on demand. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know all the books that 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 we had put out before uh, Tim's passing are still available and will be available, I guess, in the uh, uh, foreseeable future, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to um, continue. Uh, putting out new books uh, 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 in the near future. And Good. You know what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Peter. Uh, well, there's two, and one you already kind of answered, which was, you know, what are what are the future plans for projects um, that that you did with Tim Beckley that that haven't been realized? And I guess it's kind of like you know, a, a tentative or a, yeah, I guess a, a tepid full speed ahead um, in this case. And his his last question was, uh, well, statement then question, which was, I always enjoyed. Uh, listening to the both of you on your great Exploring the Bizarre show, do you intend to continue producing a paranormal show in some way, shape, or form? Mm -hmm. Uh, Briefly, I'll go back and say that um, uh, Sean Castile and I are currently working on a book that that, that Tim was working on before he passed. uh, The title is called The Dulcie Warriors, and uh, Tim had... uh, practically had all of it finished and had sent it on to Sean to be proofread. So mm. hopefully, you know, in the next uh, couple of months, we'll be able to get that finished and, uh, and, and published. Now, as for exploring the bazaar, um, I, I won't be uh, continuing uh, that show, unfortunately. And I just, I love doing the show and I loved doing it with Tim. And I just, it, it, it's just really, to me, it seems inconceivable to do it without him. He was such an integral part of the show that I just, it, it, it really would be hard for me to, to, to continue it on without him. Now, I know that Tim would be like, oh, you know, just go ahead and do it. You know, but, <laughs> you know, he, he was, he was such a major part of the show. Heck, we wouldn't even have to have guests. Sometimes, you know, we'd have guests that would bail on us at the last moment, and it would just then be the two of us talking, you know, for, for, for two hours. And uh, we, we probably could have done that more often uh, because those kinds of shows were so much fun. And uh, so, you know, I just, uh, you know, unfortunately, I just, I, I can't see doing the show without him. Now, you know, I mean, you know, the, the time may come soon that uh, I, I may want to, to, tackle doing another show of my own but uh, you have to remember that i've been doing uh, uh various shows for more than 10 years uh straight uh up until when uh, uh, uh tim passed away so you know it's it's, it's kind of nice right now just having a little break and doing shows uh, like yours mm. well you always have a home with us tim no, thank you and uh you you're, we, we've officially put you in our stable of uh, guest co-hosts and uh uh, we hope that you'll join us as often as possible. So oh, there definitely. we have it. Uh, now, before we uh, move to uh, another subject, we haven't got much time left, I wanted to uh, give Tim a chance to promote uh, his own uh, work, his we- websites, books, whatever, uh, and let us know where people can find out more about you. Sure. Well, uh, we still have the uh, Conspiracy Journal website up. It's conspiracyjournal.com. And uh, uh, you can uh, uh, find a lot of our uh, articles, myself, Tim Beckley, Sean Castile, and, and, and others, as, as well as linked to uh, a lot of our favorite books. You 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 showed uh, uh, UFO repeaters. You know that was Tim's one of Tim's uh, uh, favorite books. Uh, yeah, it's one of mine too. Yeah, I mean we had we had a great time putting that together, and and uh, uh, Tim's last book that had been officially published before he passed away was called uh, Alien Lives Matter It's Okay to Be Gray <laughs> and uh yeah I heard about that yeah uh, yeah you know the 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 rest of us you know we were kind of like well, we don't know about, yeah. you know about that uh, title it may not you know be perceived very well but uh but Tim stuck to his guns he wanted he wanted that title because uh, a big portion of that book dealt with the uh, African American uh, UFO experience, which really hasn't been covered. No, very seldom treated subject. Yeah. Right. Right. And so he he wanted that uh, uh, that book published. And darn, if he wasn't correct, I mean that that ended up being a, a really big seller for him. 
and uh, and and I'm sure that has made him very happy from uh, uh, the you know on the on the mothership where I'm sure he is now <laughs> looking looking down, you know, and 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 seeing how how well appreciated that that book is. But uh, you know, as as for myself, like I said, uh, Sean Castile and I are, are trying to uh, finish up Dulce Warriors, uh, which uh, you know, hopefully we will have out in uh, the next uh, you know a few months. And uh, you know, I've got I've got some other uh, uh, writing projects uh, uh, for books that uh, that I have been working on that uh, I've I had to set aside to deal. With uh, Tim's passing and, and everything up, so yeah. you know, ho- hopefully, I'll be able to uh, start tackling those as well. And uh, I, I think we're going to owe Sean Castile an apology. I should have invited him to be on the show today. Uh, he's certainly a major f- a player in the publishing operation, and uh, I've been on the air with him once or twice. I think you have too, Ben. Mm. Uh, so we'll, we'll be in touch with him off the air. But uh, <clears throat> just to explain some of the titles to our listeners who may not be familiar, uh, Dulcy, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Dulce refers to, uh, I, I presume, Dulce to Mexico. Yes. And the um, uh, purported underground base where a lot of dramatic things have occurred <laughs> over the years. That sounds like a great subject. And UFO repeaters, uh, that that's not a uh, not a well known term for for the average, you know, in the average household. Uh, repeaters it means people who have had repeated UFO experiences, such as uh, Joe Ferry or our old friend here from WON. So that that's essentially what that uh, what that might mean. Now, um, as far as um, your own impressions uh, of of Tim's, I mean, we always were impressed by his quick mind, hmm. his uh, his interesting points of view on a number of things, including synchronicities. Uh, you know the things that that are supposed to be coincidence, meaningful coincidences, and I don't believe in coincidence. But I just wanted to go through. We have seven major shows that people can listen to from the past. Uh, all our on-air interviews with Tim, uh, w- w- starting in 2013, uh, and I suppose we we can put the, these are all available in the archives at behindtheparanormal.com, and most of them are on iTunes as well. Uh, July 1st, 2013, Men in Black, show number 463. Um, the following year, in August, show number 548, Strange Synchronicities. We had a great time talking about that. Uh, October 6th, uh, 2014, Impossible Coincidences and Other Paranormal Conundrums, show number 555, which was his 50th anniversary here at WON, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, that's when he came up. Uh, show 607 from October 5th, 2015, UFOs and Concepts of the Afterlife. Interesting. And then he, he co-hosted an open line. He was one of our, our guest co-hosts as well, official one. He co-hosted open lines with us on show 704 on uh, August 13th, 2017. We talked about hostile UFOs, August 19th, 2018. A few days, you know, actually, uh, oh, 2018, a year later. Show 755. And then finally, uh, his most recent appearance, um, you know, in his own right, uh, was simply a conversation with Timothy Green Beckley. Show 737, April 15th, 2018. Uh, mm-hmm. so, uh, those are all available and you'll really enjoy them if you go and listen to them. So, so Tim, uh, are you going to make, uh, th- there are recorded shows of exploring the bazaar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Ben and I were on a number of times over mm-hmm. the years. And where can people uh, access those? Yes, the uh, uh, those shows are available on YouTube under the banner of uh, Mr. UFO's Secret Files. And uh, uh, practically, I think, uh, uh, every edition of Exploring the Bazaar, with the exception of this past year, um, when uh, we the, the the person who had originally had done our uh, the, the editing for our videos and also provided just these fantastic animations for our uh, opening dialogue. Oh my gosh, they were just so good and so popular. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, he got involved with uh, some other projects and didn't have time to take those on anymore. And uh, then uh, uh, Tim's uh, grandniece, Michelle, who was on earlier, uh, she actually came in and uh, edited uh, a, a, a few episodes. So hmm. uh, for all intents and purposes, practically every uh, uh 
show is uh, available on YouTube under the banner of Mr. UFO's Secret Files. Well, one of uh, Tim's uh, uh, super K's was also, along with Mr. UFO, was Mr. Creepo, okay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I remember when I picked him up uh, in October of 2014 at the uh, railroad station in Providence, when he came all the way from New York, uh, we had a wonderful conversation, and and he said... uh, Right off the bat, he said, it's so exciting to be on a real radio station <laughs> and, and not having to do this by phone or Internet or anything else. And uh, from a traditional standpoint, and because not to mention the 50 years uh, previously you'd been on with Joe Ferrier. But we got, uh, my truck was parked uh, across the street from the railroad station in front of the Rhode Island State House. Mm. And uh, it was, I had that white truck at the time. Yes. And we got into the truck, and, and a really weird-looking guy... <laughs> with a beard and an old overcoat, uh, we were joking, probably was a member of the legislature, uh, was, was staring, he, he looked at the, at the parking meter, and Tim looked, Tim, uh, was he gonna give us a ticket or, and, and then he stared through the windshield at us, and Tim and I just stared right back. The guy got scared and ran away, so Mr. Creepo was at his best that day, I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, Tim came up, and uh, we we were right here in the studio where we are now. We had a great show. Uh, he videoed the whole thing, and that that's around somewhere. Uh, I have photographs from, him. And, and then we uh, he came over to the house, and he met the cat, mm. and uh, he uh, we, we talked in a, in our family library, which is very extensive. We have about four thousand books. I don't have any more room for any. And then we went to dinner at Grumpy's, a very uh, a nice restaurant in this area, very cheerful, despite the name. So we had a, that was just a wonderful uh, time. That that was, I think, the only time I ever was actually in the presence of Tim, as opposed to knowing him uh, online, etc. Yeah, instead of an avatar of some sort. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so there we have it. Well, uh, Tim, uh, any uh, final? Well, I want to put it this way: any any uh, <laughs> last uh, final thoughts uh, about our, our dear friend? <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, uh, Tim Beckley was 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 such a fantastic person, and, and I and I have to say that you know he's gotten a lot of cris- criticism over the years. Some people put it that Tim never had a, uh, a UFO theory that that he didn't like, and <laughs> uh, you know, but, but Tim actually had a very you know open mind when it it, it it came to UFOs and the paranormal, and whether or not. You know, uh, some of the articles and books that we put out actually fit, you know, his own personal beliefs. Um, it, that didn't matter to him because he felt that all of this should be out there for people to decide for themselves. You know, he, he was not the type of person that was going to censor uh, a, a story because, you know, he, he thought it would be too weird or it didn't fit within, you know, some preset uh, uh, belief system. And, th- and that was the thing that I always loved about him. And it really fit my own um, you know, ideas as well is that, uh, you know, we, you know, we really don't know. So, I mean, we need to get all of these, all this information out there, all of these experiences out there, because in one way or another, it's valuable. It's valuable information. Yes. I have to agree. Uh, Tim was very open minded. And, uh, you know, I, when we first started to get to know him, I mean, he had all this, uh, uh, experience from the days of, uh, you know, George Adamski and, and, and uh, all these people up in the 50s and 60s. And I thought, gee, man, is he still in that era? And he's not. He wasn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, and we have a lot, we have a lot of, uh, we like to call progressive paranormal ideas, uh, you know, no political overtones intended, but, you know, new, new approaches to the paranormal that we found sort of in the trenches, whether it be UFOs or anything else. And Tim was very, he fit right into that. Uh, so that was, uh, essentially, um, our experience with Tim and, and, uh, I, I don't know, I, I just, a wonderful guy and he's going to be sorely missed, certainly. Mm, yes. Ben, any, uh, final thoughts? He, he had such a presence that, like, you, <laughs> yes. you can't really replicate. <laughs> It's it's uh, even, even if like you know if, if, I'll I'll just I'll never get sitting in the studio with the guy and he just he brought this this energy that was just like y- you couldn't tell how old he was no you couldn't he, no, no. <laughs> I was like I was like this guy's I was like I was like you know I you know, I, I I you know talked to him prior you know you know kind of and we we just we just kind of had him in here and I, I was sitting here and I was like wow this he's he's so lively so energetic and he still is right yeah 
you know, he's he still has this this presence. Like even even when we're we're just talking about him, it's it's just like you know, it's it's still kind of there, and it's it's still it's still kind of acting in some way, shape, or form. And you know, he was a he was a, a kind of a goofy guy, but what you see is what you saw is what you got. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I, it's really hard to come across people like that, you know, nowadays. They don't make them like Tim anymore. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. I think no. that's a great, great thought to end on. Okay, Timothy Green Beckley, folks. Uh, okay, let's move on to the rest of our announcements. Ben, if you would uh, be so kind. Sure thing. So, uh, first, first things first. We uh, will be presenting at uh, once again at the Western UFO Connect or the Western Connecticut UFO Conference uh, during the last week of October this year. Uh, this will be a mostly virtual event uh, with a the hybrid sort of a hybrid event that's that's going to be going on at the Danbury Connecticut Public Library uh, on Saturday, October 30th, and more information to follow. Uh, I'll be presenting COVID permitting. Uh, a uh, paranormal overview at the uh, Arizona Dowsing Conference at the Little America Hotel in Flagstaff on Friday, October 8th. More information as we go. And good news on the website front. All regular recorded radio broadcasts of Behind the Paranormal from CBS Radio, Achieve Radio, and here on WON, AM, and FM. Uh, we have been restored in the archives at BehindTheParanormal.com. Also fully restored are the Return to Rendlesham series from 2010 to 2011 on CBS Radio and all related shows along with the Achieve Radio monthly two-hour specials from 2009. Well, really reaching back. Um, and still working on restoring other uh, special shows, podcasts, and interviews, and that should be done soon. And our show has its own app now. Uh, it's very, very uh, basic, but uh, it has... Um, links to all our most recent shows where you can download them and this sort of thing and and it'll automatically pop in there every week uh we're hoping to get it in the apple and google stores soon there's a lot of there are a lot of hoops to jump through for that uh, but there's a link at behind the paranormal.com if you'd like to download it now right on the main page and you can check out our books along with those of our guest co-hosts at our show website, BehindTheParanormal.com, uh, where you also can find out more about the show, our many cases over the years, our public appearances, and how to book us, along with some of our 900-plus free recorded shows, uh, and now restored, as my dad mentioned. Yeah, and uh, as Tim is a new uh, official guest co-host, we're going to be putting uh, links to your books in there. Tim, you don't know it yet. Uh, you do now. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we'll be putting links uh, there to the Amazon pages or, or however you'd like to uh, have that done. We'll consult with you on that. Uh, okay, so uh, and uh, we... Don't forget about our podcasts. Uh, you can, right. Yes, there are many of those, and all of our past shows back to 2009 are available on major podcast platforms that includes YouTube, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, the Paranormal Radio app, Spotify, uh, the Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live, and Spotify, and all of those great places. You can find them all on there. Okay, so, uh, Tim, we already heard about what's, what's happening with you. Uh, so uh, what's on the stove for next week, Ben? Um, well... We've got some some interesting stuff. Uh, we that's uh, August eighth. Jeez, we're already in August. Um, we'll be back uh, with the great Heidi Hollis to talk about the Hat Man and other horrors. Uh, Heidi actually coined some of the uh, terms that we use for these entities, including shadow people. And Tim is going to give us our quote today. Uh, yes, but we do have a, a little little bit of time left, and we forgot to mention our charities. Well, maybe it's a long quote. Is it a long quote? Oh well, no, it's, not, it's it's not a long quote. Okay, you know well then what? we'll talk about charity. Well, you know what? Take take the quote, Tim. It's all up huh. to you, bud. <laughs> all right. Well, this is one of my favorite quotes from uh, uh, Tim Beckley, and he said that uh, during radio and TV interviews, the t- host will always ask, "What is my opinion about UFOs?" And I always tell them, "It doesn't matter what my opinion is, as UFOs act independently of my beliefs or anyone else's." There we go. Huh? That's, a, I, uh, that's well, a pretty good quote. I'm Paul Eno. And I'm Ben Eno. And I'm Tim Swartz. Thanks for joining us on our great cosmic journey, and we'll see you next time on Behind the Paranormal. Return to this radio frequency 167 hours from now for another edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno.